a weird case occurred. This is like mentioning of vampires, you know, if you're a fan of Arthur Conan Doyle, you know, he's a scientific man. But why is there a vampire here? Hello and welcome back to Honey Fancies. Um, I am so excited today that I am announcing it's Sherlock's birthday. Yes, Sherlock Holmes' birthday, the 6th of January. So to kind of like celebrate this auspicious day. I just want to talk about all my favourite Sherlock stories written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle because I just feel like doing so. I'll be going through the favourite things by the date of the publish... publish... Pub, publishing? The published date of each book or stories and so hopefully you guys are okay. And by saying going through by date, I mean I am Wikipediaing the thing, so if the date's wrong, um, blame the wiki. Um, yeah, so I'll start with um, the novels part first. My favourite um, Sherlock Holmes novel is The Hound of the Baskerville, and here's the book review. It is so exciting, and I just wish you all could read so that we can discuss about things. So. Sometimes when it comes to like most, most other famous Sherlock stories, um, it focuses upon just one timeline of just one incident. But in The Hound of the Buskervilles, um, there are so many mini episodes in there. So there's the mentioning of another case and a crime going on together at the same time and things like that, overlapping things. So there's a lot of, for you to focus upon and that's amazing as well as the vibe of the story, where the things take place, everything is just so pleasant in there, so highly recommend. This is my first and most favourite um, Sherlock book, novels, the long one, and by saying that, I have just remembered that I forgot to go it by date, so actually there's another one which is The Sign of the Four. This one is also my favourite and it's quite very paramount compared to other stories because this is the book where Mary was first mentioned about and she is the later wife of Dr. Watson, Sherlock's crime partner. His partner sound weird. <laughs> Never mind about that. So yeah, it's an amazing book. Um, it's more to the sentimental side as well. It's not just going reasoning, deducing about things, but there are also um, love or just like talking about other things too not just like going through with a magnifying glasses and dogs and going through crime searching for murderers or something like that it's just way more than that so i'd say design of the four has more elements than many other sherlock stories or short stories so yeah that's it two of my um, most favorite novels by um with sherlock holmes inside um, there are actually four of them, so it's like A Study in Scarlet, The Sign of the Four, The Hounds of Baskervilles, and The Ball of Fear, which is my least favourite. Sorry guys, if you like it, I'm terribly sorry about that. And so now we're moving to short stories. Um, there are many favourites of mine here, so I'm just going to go through the dates now. I'm terribly sorry for the previous one, I just literally just, I don't know what happened, but... Um, so, when I say about short stories, in Sherlock, most people think of A, the scandal in Bohemia, like, mentioning of Irene Adler and things like that, it's like one of the most famous, but for me, I'm just like, neutral, neutral about that thing, I just don't feel like that's the best one. It's just so famous just because, like, a woman beat it, Sherlock, but apart from that, it's just like a normal story. And it's also famous, I guess, because of it's the first short story ever. But anyway, um, it's kind of okay, that one. But uh, my favorite from the first um, some first merging, first whole book of Sherlock. So, like, basically, I think I'm going just, like, publish them, like, one each into the Strand magazine. And then they just, like, put together, like, 12 stories and make a book out of that. So, on the first book, my favorite is the... Adventure of the Engineer's Thumb. So here, um, it's a story. I'll say. Uh, I'll just read what I have noted here. It says a hydraulic engineer was lured by a German criminal by a large amount of money. Sherlock solved the crime, but the police were too late to capture. So here's the fun part. Um, so it's a story of like an engineer who's like, who got himself into a, like a mess of 
criminal things from Germany and it's like money fraudery and things like that and in the story it mentions about well, a trick that uses a carriage and put the engineer in there and something I'm not gonna spoil the story it's just so amazing about that part the trick and everything so I just hope you guys can go and check that out it's amazing I give it a 5 out of 5 here and so um, we're moving to another favorite of mine which is a advent the adventure of the speckled band and the reason why I like this story is because it's my first um, introduction to Sherlock ever and I like I read that like when I was like what 10 was it 10 mm -hmm. yeah 10 so yeah when I was 10 I was introduced to Sherlock with this story for the first time and so it it holds it, it yeah my it holds a, a special part in my mind and my heart, something like that. And this one, the case is not that great, but there's a lot of elements, like more to the like people's relations and people's like personality too. So I just like it that way. I recommend you guys read this one as well because like there's a lot of things going on. Um, next, we move to. The second book, I forgot to mention, right? The first book is called The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, and the second book is called The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. And here holds a lot of my favorites, I would have to say. So the first thing is um, the Musgrave Ritual. I have to say this is like mwah, the number one chef kiss. Both I and my sister love, love, love the story. And so let me just read you what I note and then I'll just gonna like explain more about it. Musgrave Ritual, a chapter which Watson described all about Sherlock's habit at his 221B Baker Street before Sherlock introduced him to one of his early solving. His aristocratic friends, butler and maid, disappeared. <laughs> Sherlock had then been in a case more like a treasure hunt okay so never mind about that it's just about like okay Sherlock's friends like long ago even before he met Dr. Watson he got a friend he got a friend all right he's not a sociopath like in many other films mentioning about Sherlock anyway so he met a, his friend and so his friend one day came to him and was like oh good dudes um my butler my servant they, they're gone they disappeared something like that and so she's like okay let me check what's going on and the story ended up being kind of like a treasure hunt which is amazing and what makes it even more amazing is that I actually solved this one so I just love it so much and yeah then we come to the Rygate puzzle which is another amazing one because um, this uh, kind of illustrates the more fragile part of Sherlock I, was, I don't know how to explain this but um Okay, I'll just read the Rygate puzzle note I made and I'm just like gonna explain more. A strange case of bu bur burglary that occurred just before Sherlock arrived in the countryside. Sherlock had just recovered from an illness and was to, and was to start in devouring on an extraordinary case again. Sherlock explained a lot of how he observed in this chapter. So, this is more like a study in Sherlock's methods and things like that. So you get to learn how to look, where to look and things like that as well as it shows the Sherlock on the ill part. So like, um, I'm not gonna spoil it here, it's just so amazing and I actually guess part of this myth right. So I'm quite very proud of myself and so I really like this story. Another favourite of mine is the yellow face but I'm not going through very deep there because it's not like the number one. I'm just gonna like say that. I also like the yellow face. You, can, you guys can sh go and check that out. And this one, um, last of this memoir, is the final problem and as the name already tells you a lot, it's the final final problem before Sherlock just um, end his life at the writing bar fall but actually he did survive um, that's a spoil whatever people already knew that but anyway I'm just gonna talk about this that it mentions a lot of places and Professor Moriarty as well that's like this story holds all of the um, very important characters and so I like it a lot that ex explains a lot of how that era of 
that you read it Sherlock Holmes lived in it was like that there's a mastermind in crime that um, boss people to do little crimes here and there cause you know um, disturbance to the police something like that and so then it mentions about Sherlock being almost defeated that he had to run away to the continental Europe and so that was just amazing I feel like Reading this book, it is like traveling, especially when you're reading it during COVID lockdown. It's like, okay, I'm going to Switzerland, I'm going to places, and that's amazing. Which, talking about traveling, there's a, also another story, which is called The Disappearance of Lady Frances Carfax. I think it's also, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's the name. It's also a Sherlock story, and that's amazing as well. It's like traveling in Europe. If you're not living in there, it's, it's just going to be an amazing chance for you to just like travel in time and travel abroad. And so now we are moving to the return of Sherlock Holmes, which is my favorite one because um, the first two books mention Sherlock as being um, a heartless person like a robot that works and works and works like solving crimes sorry solving crimes after crimes but when he returned back to Baker Street after people thought he was dead he became more kind of like sentimental more ki kinder to Watson and everyone and so it sure feels more approachable more human like and so it's even better this way and so I really like this book and talking about my favorite stories in this, um, this one there's a lot, but it's not like the chef kiss one, just like from the memoirs that I've mentioned, like a couple of them. But I have to say I like the Dancing Men, the Priory School, the Charles Augustus Milverton, um, the Three Students, um, Golden P. Sorry, it's French people, but it says P I N C E N E Z. So it's like. Pins, Nez, Pine, Pine, I, I don't know, sorry, but that means the glasses that you don't go to the ears, you just like clip it with your nose, using your clip, your, clip it to your nose, something like that. And yeah, those are my favorite. The Golden Glasses is a very good book, I have to say, with a lot of tricks and solving tricks as well. And another one I really like is The Three Sultans because it mentions about like vibe in a university or like studying college and things like that and it's just so so good for a student to read about and so we move to the last book i think no it's not the last book last but um oh, the one before the last how do i say that and so here is the his last bow so the story i like from this book is the adventure of a dying detective Mwah, chef kissed this one Sherlock again faked his illness in order to solve crime. So many a time Sherlock just like kind of like make the public thought that he was ill, not ready to solve crime, so that the criminals were like, ah, oh, Sherlock's not here. Let's um commit something. And then Sherlock would be like, ha ha, I'm not, I'm not ill. I'm not ill. I'm gonna solve your crime. And so yeah, that's great. And this one is amazing because. He okay. This is a spoiler. Cl um, um, cover your ears if you're not gonna listen. But Sherlock actually, uh, my camera shuts itself down due to low battery. Terribly sorry about that. So I'm just gonna like wrap up those um lost parts out, and hopefully this hair is done right because I don't really remember. <laughs> sorry, guys. And so let's just come back to our dying detective. This is a very good chapter for me. I really like it because Sherlock just like fake his own illness again. And so it was like mentioning about like how to fake having cold, how to fake having like using wax on your lips to make it look very dry or using powder, using this, that, these, those just to make you look very ill. How to fake his illness and something like that in order to like tell Fate the criminal that, okay, Sherlock is dying, you can come out now, stop hiding from everyone, you're free now, Sherlock's already gone, something like that. And so, the fun part here is that Sherlock actually deceived his best friend, Dr. Watson. And so, the entire chapter, Watson was like freaking out, like, oh no, oh no, my friend's dying, my friend's dying. And so, he did absolutely everything Sherlock asked him to do, which is like, 
sometimes he's just like asking why am I to do that why am I to do that but this time he's just like okay I'm gonna do it for you I'm gonna do it for you because you're dying I'm just like gonna please you and so I think it was so nice so <laughs> so sweet of them that Sherlock actually took what's an RA um these that these those um so it was like kind of like I think this is like where the cannon just pop up like okay Sherlock Watson I don't know and then so we moved to the next um, chapter because I just don't want to talk about the previous anymore. The disappearance of Lady Cor Francis Carfax. This is my favorite as well. As already mentioned, it's like traveling in a European country, continental things, continental things. And so I really like this one because there's a trick that is like quite very famous. And it was reused in one of the animation called um, Detective Conan. I just kind of like figured that out while watching it, but it's not like 100% copy paste, but I feel, I can feel, sorry guys, um, I can feel the glimpse in, in the story, in the plot that was like inspired by the original Sherlock to this Japanese animation. We're just gonna go back to our original footage now. Thank you so much for not being so mad with me. I am terribly sorry, just like everything just downfall on my special filming day. Um, yeah, so back to our original one. Okay, so let's continue our journey with the devil's foot. So I say, when I said three siblings were like playing cards together, suddenly one died and two had gone lunatic, lo loony. So like, what happened? That That's a very cool case here. Sherlock came to solve the thing and in this story it describes how devoted Sherlock was to his cases because he almost killed himself by experimenting about a poison and I'm not going any further than that because it's going to be a big spoiler here. Anyway, let's move on to the last book which is the casebook of Sherlock Holmes. I have to say that this book had took me like month after month in order to find and purchase it so it holds another special part in my mind because it's so hard to find and so expensive. Um, never mind about that. Let's just talk about cases here. Uh, these cases are like the essence, the quintessence of the Sherlock universe because it's like the last, last books. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through that. Uh, my favorite from this book is The Adventure of the Mastering Stone, which the note says here. The crown jewel Mastering Stone was stolen. Sherlock made another use of his wax figure to capture the criminal as well as retrieving back the stone with use of a modern gramophone and a psycholo psychological talk the wrong man were finally in the police's hands so if you've been reading Sherlock the entire series like in order you're gonna know that Sherlock had another wax figure that looked exactly like him just to kind of like fake to certain spy that he's at the Baker Street office when he's not so that um, bad people are like okay Sherlock's dear let's not do bad things and something like that you know so he made a la the last use of that wax um, figure of himself to capture the thieves and then another favorite is the adventure of a creeping man this for me sound quite impossible and not practical in the scientific or the modern scientific world because like um, there is the use of a annual based um, elixir medicine that makes you go immortal or turn back rejuvenate so yeah and the people who consume it um, sh their behavior just kind of changes to the animal that was the source of the medicine so I feel like that could not be real like no so but apart from that the plot which is amazing so hopefully you guys check this one out as well and then we come to another chef kiss one because I solve it wow okay this is getting very okay uh <laughs> So this is like matching of vampires, you know, if you're a fan of Arthur Conan Doyle, you know he's a scientific man, but why is there a vampire here? So let me talk about like, so one day there's a letter arriving at Baker Street saying, please come and check my household out, I think my wife had gone vampire. <laughs> so 
and then it mentions about um finding the wife, the lady, the mistress of the house, like um bending her her head down and sucking her baby's neck, and so there was like, oh my god, what happened? And so yeah, Sherlock go and solve that case out. And I think this one is for me personally, yeah, no offense to anyone, but I think this is an inspiration for the book of that Chrissy wrote, Crooked House, because for some reason the culprit is of the same same type. That's all the spoilers are allowed here. You guys go check that out if you ever read um Crooked House by Gatha Christie, you probably have already guessed um what kind of thing is going to happen in this Sussex vampire thing. And so we're moving on to another chief kiss, which is the lion's mane. This one focused on Sherlock's life when he was like, he once retired from Baker Street to the countryside to have a like a bee farm. He's just like doing his business. He had a bee farm there, spending his life, like having fun around like the shore and something like that. And so a weird case occurred and so he solved and solved and solved and using his um, external weird fun fact knowledge to solve the case and so this kind of explains that he was like a versatile person with that that has like knowledge on every freaking field in the world so yeah that's that's it and to the last one which is mwah, 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 my super super favorite <laughs> Okay, this video is getting very wild and weird, but it's the adventure of the blanched, ble bleached, blanched, I don't know, I can't read my handwriting anyway, or even if I can, I don't know how to pronounce that word, but it's, the word's gonna be here, um, soldier, and so this one I solved it, I solved it, I solved it. <laughs> so, it's about a story, a man came to Charlotte's office, Baker Street, and said like, help my friend from the war we fought together just disappeared and so he's like okay let me go and share what have you done what what do you know about the case to scene and anything and so he said like he saw his friend and his friend's face though was pure white and just then we best friend for some reason he just ran away from his best friend so I hope you guys understand that it was kind of messed up but so yeah everything turned so weird and when he visited his friend's family like everybody's like kind of like trying to get rid of him like not telling what happened and things like that but he did saw his friend like locked up in one of the room in the house or something like that not anymore spoiling so Sherlock went there and this is amazing because Sherlock actually had some medical knowledge as well so he actually solved the case and helped the someone with his illness um that's that's is that a spoiler cover your ears sorry but um wait i forgot one yeah i forgot one sorry guys um there's another one called the retired color man this is my favorite as well because I also solved it and it has so many glimpses uh, of inspiration for another favorite animation of mine which is Detective Conan so I saw many um, inspiration of characters in this particular episode um, chapter of Sherlock short stories and so I'm just gonna talk about it that um, it's just amazing um, no no spoiler this one is so good too good and it's solvable so I just don't want to spoil it to you guys so that you guys can go and read them check them out and solve it yourself and you're gonna feel so proud of yourself because many times people said Sherlock cases other Conan Doyle's cases in Sherlock are just insol unsolvable that is so untrue yes certain of them are but not all of them and many of them are solvable and so I think I'm going to do another video upon solvable cases and um, hopefully my lunch break is always over now that's it for my happy birthday Sherlock episode here today hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, I've never asked this before but give it a like subscribe if you like comment if you like <laughs> and also yes happy new year guys happy 2022 hope it brings amazing stuff into your life as well as thank you so much for um, 150 subs. Um, love y'all. Bye.